Hi everyone, this is the second part of my thread build log. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you why I decided to put a radiator on the rear. In the first video I explained the water cooling setup I'm going to be using and the various components. Uh, today I'm just going to show you quickly why I want a rear radiator. But to do that I want to direct you to my old build, which you might notice behind me, I'll give you a close for that. Direct you to my old build, more importantly the case side panel. This is the side panel of my current case. And you'll notice it's not square. It's actually got a nice curve to it. And that is a really useful feature that I wish they'd put in more cases. Actually, the, the case panel itself actually extends about three inches, or two to three inches, along, uh, beyond the size of the case. The case actually comes to here. The, fr uh, the rear I.O. panels come out, and they are hidden behind the uh, case. And I'm going to give you a quick panoramic of my flat here so that you can see why that's useful. Okay, so even if I'm in the living room area next to the TV or sat down on the sofa, watching my TV, look over there, there's no messy cables. I can't see the messy cable management from the rear of the case. And that's important when the rear of the case is on a show. Now, I'm actually not going to have the new PC sat here. So my new PC is going to be here on the desk above where the current one is. The current one doesn't give me a lot of leg room and I want to be able to see in because I'm going to do the nice water cool setup so it'll be useful to be able to see. And this is a problem because as I walk around the flat I can see that from a distance and I'll be able to see all those ugly cables popping out behind the case. So as I'm in the kitchen I'll be able to see from here all the I.O. cables coming out down the desk and that's going to be very ugly. Okay, so I've now mounted a radiator on the rear, as you can see, and that will hide the rear I.O. You can see that the radiator is actually lined up with the I.O. panel. So the I.O. will come out here and will be blocked from view by the radiator and the fan. Now, that solves that problem and helps me with hiding the open wires, but introduces a couple more. Okay, the first problem this creates is that I can't fit fans down here because two reasons. One, it will block the access to the rear GPU. If you can see there, there's actually in this case a metal strip that actually blocks off the PCI E connectors. And actually that's where the screws go in. So that's actually sticking out about a centimetre. However, I have a solution to this problem. And my solution to this problem is... So my solution to this problem is I've taken one of the fans apart and you can see I was able to detach this translucent ring from the fan and I've also hacksawed out the fan blade itself. And what that will allow me to do is place this over the gap. So here's a uh, close-up of the problem I've got. You can see this is stuck out. I'm going to be having the radiator on the rear like this. So there's going to be a problem because the radiator is going to be hanging between there and there which means I can't put a fan on it and that will, uh, that will go against the entire purpose of having the radiator on the rear to hide the rear I.O. You'll still be able to see the cables coming out. So what I've done is I've made a mod to this fan. You can see I've taken one of the fans which I've got here and I was able to take out this plastic ring so I've taken out the plastic ring that was in there, just pop that out, that will go back in. And I've actually snipped off, or with a hacksaw and some pliers, taken off the fan itself. So it's just actually a ring. And the good part about this is the RGB still works. So it's now just an RGB ring casing. 
but what that will allow me to do is mount on here like this and you can see if I put that on there that will go straight over and while it will be attached to the radiator it will go over there like that and there's enough space in order to have it go round any obstructions in the case. And we've also got space behind it inside the fan before it gets to the radiator for any GPU connections. Um, one thing I've got is an angle bracket HDMI connector. So that will connect to the GPU and that should sit nicely behind the fan. So that will be in the GPU, that will be over there and we can run the cable behind the fan. And I can do that for any cable. I couldn't find the display port one, so I'm using HDMI. My monitor's got HDMI 2.0. That solves the problem of accessing the GPU ports. So what we're going to have is three fans on the radiator, or six fans because I'm going to do push-pull. So the radiator's going to be on here. There's going to be a real fan. So the radiator's going to be on here. There'll be a real fan at the top in the first position. The second position will be one of my modded fans, as will the bottom uh, one, to avoid that lump. And then there'll be three fans on the rear because otherwise this radiator won't perform very well because there'll only be a, fan, a real fan at the top. These two positions will be uh, fake. The second problem I've got with mounting a radiator on the rear is that I need to connect some tubes to it in order to fill it with liquid. And that poses a problem because it means I need to somehow get tubes from inside the case to outside the case. And I've had a few different thoughts on how to do this, but the one I think I've settled with, although I haven't drilled the holes yet, is this. Okay, so my solution for the uh, tubes to the radiator is this. This radiator is mounted with the ports at the bottom, as I said in the last video. And that's on purpose because the pump and the reservoir are going here, as I said, that's going to connect to the pump. And then I need some way of connecting this port or as I come to in a moment, the bottom port, to uh, somewhere else. And the easiest way to do that is to run it to the rear radiator. Now I had planned on taking this port here and running it up through the shroud up to the GPU. So a bit of soft tubing up to the shroud, then drill a hole in the shroud, put one of the uh, pass-through connectors in and then go up to the GPU. That would have worked, but it would have been filling and draining a bit difficult. So I've had a slight redesign from what I mentioned in the last video. And what I'm actually going to do is this bottom of the case does not sit on the floor. If you can see it, that goes under the case, that clips into the case and just gives it a bit more aesthetic as it has at the top. So this is just the bottom version of that. And there's also this stand here, which slots into. I took this off to make modding it easier, but that actually supports the entire case. Knowing that this radiator has a port at the bottom there as well as the top, what I'm going to do is use one of these uh, rotary fittings. I'm going to attach that to the bottom of the radiator. So drill a hole just here, big enough for this rotary fitting. This rotary fitting will then go into the bottom of the case to actually line up with the radiator. So ignore where I'm putting it. It would then line up with the radiator. That will effectively go through like that and it will come down about here in this bottom part. And what I'm then going to do is take some hard tubing, run the hard tubing under here. So that this bit's a bit too long really. Now at the moment this doesn't work because that's too high. And if you can see, I can't run, a, uh, run the tubing out the back because that leg's in the way. But the front of the case is actually slightly different. This lip is significantly lower. So what I'm going to do is file this rear rip, uh, lip down to be a similar height to the front one. And if we imagine I've done that, and the, front's the, uh, the back's the front and the front's the back, the tubing's going to be coming down from here. So that's going to be connecting to the radiator about there somewhere. And I can angle that as I want because this is a rotary. And then I'm going to get my hard tubing, run the hard tubing along the case, connect it to the port, which will be going up into the radiator. And then I can just slide it out. And if I can get that to a bit of an angle, so it's running downhill, then it'll be a really useful drain port. So that's going to then have a splitter at this end, one of which is going to go into the rear radiator. So if I do this the way around, it's actually going to be. 
Okay, I've got a mock setup here of the rough layout I'm going to use. So the hard tubing is going to come out. The hard tubing is going to be connected to a splitter. I'll probably get a T-splitter rather than a white splitter as it'll be a bit easier. And then I'm going to use soft tubing or hard tubing, whichever is easiest, to go off to the radiator. And the other way is going to have a drain port. So I can just drain by twisting this and drain the entire system without even opening the case. Uh, so that's going to go and go to the radiator. The radiator will then need some way to get back into the case and what I'm planning to do is hide a tube behind, if I take that, I'm going to hide a tube behind one of these fake fans and you can see I've got one of my destroyed fans here and I've got a 90 fitting with a bit of soft tubing because that's going to be a lot easier to deal with than hard tubing behind there and that's going to go up the radiator and then attach with the radiator on the rear so the radiator is going to be here somewhere that's going to run up behind the uh, behind the fake fans possibly behind two and then so attach somewhere to the rear of the case and that's going to attach apologies there's going to be noise up at the radiator now that's going to attach to uh, back of the case here and then come through back in and you can probably see there's space between the PCIe slots so the PCIe slots will any GPU will be that wide at most and then there's some space where in this case you can actually mount the GPU the other way around. I'm going to use that space to fit one of these pass-through fittings so the pass-through fitting is going to fit here somewhere. Um, drill a hole, we'll make one of these bigger if it lines up. Drill a hole there, so then I can pass through the soft tubing from the radiator, which is going to come out here, run up into here, through the pass-through, through the pass-through, through, and then use hard tubing from here up to this radiator. And this will be a very, very nice bend if I can do it, because I'm going to attach straight down a bit of hard tubing to that radiator like that. That hard tubing will run down as straight as I can get it and then I'm going to bend it so, if I put the camera down a second, I'm going to bend it so that it bends here somewhere and just bends into the side. So the bend will come, so that's going to be a completely straight line, as straight as I can get it. Come down, bend and face into here which will then connect back up to the which will then connect back up to this port and then go outside. And the rest of it is fairly easy because the rest of it, once the water or the loop's back in the case, this is then just going to run down to the CPU block, which will then go to the GPU block, back through the shroud, down to here. So that's the water cooling setup I'm going to be using, and hopefully, you can see how draining is going to work. For filling, I'm going to use the import at the top of the uh, reservoir. Now the reservoir is on its side but you can still use the import like this as long as obviously the water is flowing down into the res. So I've attached a 90 fitting here and I'm going to just top that off with a close and whenever I like I can attach a bit of soft tubing into there in order to fill it and to uh, then fill it I just turn the pump on and it will pump water around the system. It might take a while to bleed with so many radiators but that's how I'm planning to Fill. So now you know that my fill port's here. My drain port's going to actually, my drain port's going to be below the level of everything else in the case. The draining will be easy. Filling will be more difficult, but that's the price I'm paying for having a reservoir so low in the loop order. I'm going to finish this video by talking a little about aesthetics. You saw my flat earlier. I showed you a quick panoramic of the design to something I did when I moved in three or four years ago and I wanted my computer to match. So the look of the flat has got a black and white and green accent uh, design and you saw that earlier and I'm going to make the computer match it. Now sometimes you see these really fancy water-cooled modern looking computers in strange places. So the aesthetic of the room actually makes a difference to how I've designed this build. I don't want a really modern looking computer in an old farmhouse type building or an old cottage. I like to have the computer blending with the room rather than just stand out. Because I've got a really modern looking flat, I've gone for a modern looking computer. If I did live in a slightly less modern area, I'd try and keep my computer to a colour scheme 
and design to match that. And that Aerocool case looks really good for this flat. It wouldn't really work in a bedroom or an office or anything else. So the aesthetic of this is really important. Okay, that's it for today. I will keep you posted. I am still waiting on the CPU block, so I can't do a lot else. I will be drilling holes in the case for the pump and the hole that I told you about earlier, the holes I told you about uh, for the ports. I'll be doing that hopefully today or tomorrow. I'll film it and put that up in the next video. For now, it's goodbye, and hopefully you'll stick around and watch the next uh, video or two.